good Hit the streets of the ATL yeah. No, I'm watching through the frames of my okay. Chanel On the grind, getting mine in 2006 yeah. Flip the script, fill with shades on you haters Like them n****s and them jacks and them navigators yeah. Switch my frames to them Marc Jacobs okay. aviators 2020 vision, give it to you f***ing haters yeah. Love, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Hey guys, so today, guys, as you can see from the thumbnail and the title, we're gonna be discussing the sad, gruesome, disgusting case of the Atlanta missing and murdered children. And as and as I am almost certain that the majority of people watching this video has heard of and remember this case and it all started with the first body being discovered on july the 28th of 1979 a little black boy by the name of Alfred evans age 13 was the first to be discovered of the atlanta missing and murdered children so today guys on this video i'm gonna do a quick overview of this case for those that may not be familiar with the atlanta missing and murdered children and i will also let you know why we are actually discussing this case so to begin back in the late 70s early 80s there were approximately 30 black children and young adults that were gruesomely killed back to back all from the same neighborhoods and communities these communities were known as the low income areas and guys i remember this case as if it was yesterday the black community as a whole was completely on edge and parents were all fearing that their kids could be next. This completely changed how carefree we would play in these Atlanta streets. And a curfew was implemented for all the children in those particular communities. However, they really didn't have to implement a curfew for us because our parents did it for us. Um, because they were just scared that, you know any of their kids could be the next victim so they implemented a curfew anyway now there will be several videos on this case because there is just too much information to compile in this one video but guys before we actually start i just want to throw in something that's neither here nor there but my granny um, was a sheriff at this very time at the same exact jail that housed the man that the media portrayed as the killer of all of these victims, when in fact he was only charged and convicted in two of these murders, which happened to be two of the adult men, 27-year-old Nathaniel Cater and 22-year-old Jimmy Ray Payne. Actually, my grandmother and my um, uncle, my grandmother's brother, were both sheriffs at that time at that same exact jail. So, you know, running around the house, we would actually hear things about this case um, because they would discuss it throughout the house or whatever. So we would actually hear things about that, uh, you know, about this case. And they actually didn't believe that Wayne Williams um, was guilty. Now, Wayne Williams was never indicted or charged with any of the kids' murders, and this is the reason we are discussing this case today. In March of 2019, then-Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms ordered the Atlanta Police Department to reopen these cases in hopes that new technology would lead to a conviction for these murders that were never solved. In July of 2021, DNA in two of these cases were identified and sampled, and those samples would be subjected to additional analysis by a private lab. It was also said that 40% of the original DNA was sent to the same private lab, 
And if I'm not mistaken, the private lab being used is actually located in Utah. Um, we're now at the end of 2022, and I have not heard any updates or anything thus far on the DNA. Um, if they're done, um, examine it or whatever they're doing, I haven't heard any updates on that, but I will look and see if we're able to find any updates on that, um, information. So guys, in this first video, we will do an overview of the timelines of these murders and the details surrounding them. So as I stated before that there were 29, I'm sorry guys, there were 30 bodies found in all, two girls, six adult men, and 22 young boys, all black and all from low income areas. They were beaten, strangled, shot, tossed into rivers, and some left in abandoned buildings. There were also a few that were stabbed to death. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and break down each victim and the details surrounding their deaths. So as I have already mentioned, the first victim in this case was Alfred Evans, age 13, who was known as Q to his family and friends. Alfred was last seen on his way to see a Kung Fu movie. He was found strangled and shot to death, laying face down in some woods outside of the fairground. Alfred was found on July the 28th, 1979, and he was found with his shirt and shoes missing, but still had his dollar bill in his pants pocket, which um, indicates that Alfred never got to see his Kung Fu movie. Number two was Edward Hope Smith, age 14, who was known as Teddy to his family and friends. Now, it was said that Alfred and Eddie disappeared, I'm sorry, Alfred and Edward disappeared four days apart. Their bodies were found the same day, which again was July the 28th, 1979. Edward was last seen on July the 20th, 1979, on his way home from the skating rink. He was also shot. Cops first tried saying that these two murders were drug-related, but eventually understood them to be the first victims of the Atlanta missing and murdered children. The third victim was Milton Harvey, age 14, who disappeared while running a bank errand for his mother. He was reported missing on September the 4th of 1979, last seen riding his bike, which was found a week later in a remote area of Atlanta. But Milton's body was not found until November the 5th of 1979. His body was actually too decomposed to determine his cause of death. The fourth victim was nine-year-old Yusuf Bell. On October the 21st, Yusuf went to the store to purchase snuff for a neighbor from a grocery store called Reese Grocery, which was located on McDaniel Street. Now, there was a witness that said she saw him near the intersections of McDaniel and Fulton Streets getting in a blue car. Yusuf's body was found November the 8th, 1979 in an abandoned school, E.P. Johnson Elementary, by a janitor that was actually looking for a place to urinate. His body was found clothed in just the brown cutoff shorts that he was last seen wearing with a piece of masking tape stuck to them. Now, I'm not sure if this masking tape is considered to be part of the evidence, but um, yeah, his shorts had a piece of masking tape on it when they actually found his body. He was hit over the head twice and his cause of death was strangulation. Neighbors describe Yusuf as willy, quick-witted, and brilliant, saying that he was being asked to balance checkbooks of adults in the community.
Now, that tells you right there that Yusuf was probably going to be something really big. He was probably going to end up doing something great with himself. Um, something maybe like being an accountant, considering the fact that he was already balancing checkbooks for the adults in his community. Um, it's just very sad that he was taken so soon. Um, the fifth and first female victim was Angel Lanier. Angel was 12 years old. Now, there are a couple of discrepancies revolving around her di disappearance. So, there are some reports that said um, Angel never returned home from school um, to watch her favorite show, which was Sanford and Son. And so, that's how her mother knew something was wrong because she would never miss Sanford and Son. Um, so, when she didn't return home from school... Her mother immediately got worried and knew something wasn't right. But then there were other reports stating that she left her home at 4 p.m. that evening and was last seen at a friend's house watching Sanford and Son. Whichever the case, her body was found six days later on March 10th, 1980. She was found strangled, raped and tied to a tree in a wooded vacant lot along Camelton Road. There were said to be a pair of white panties stuffed in her mouth that did not belong to her, and her hands were bound with electrical cord. Angel and her mother had just moved to Atlanta from Chicago, Angel's mother wanted to raise her somewhere where there was a lot of greenery. So she decided to move um, Angel and herself to Atlanta. So she had not even been here long before she actually became a victim of this gruesome case. Um, the sixth victim was Jeffrey Mathis, age 10 disappeared on March 11th, a week after Angel's disappearance. Jeffrey disappeared while heading to the store to purchase cigarettes for his mother. There was another witness here that said she saw him get into a blue car with a light-skinned man and a dark-skinned man. His body was found on February the 13th, 1981, and again, Jeffrey's body was too decomposed to determine his cause of death. The seventh victim, Eric Middlebrooks, was age 15 and was reported missing on May 18, 1980. Eric was last seen answering the telephone at home and then rushing out the door, leaving in a hurry on his bike. He was found the next day, May 19th, 1980, next to his bike in a rear garage of an Atlanta bar. Eric had slight stab wounds on his chest and his arms. His pockets were turned inside out and cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma to the head. Christopher Richardson, age 12, was the eighth victim. On June 9, 1980, Christopher went missing on his way to a local pool. Last seen walking towards the Cab County Midway Recreation Park, his body was not found until the following January, January the 9th of 1981. He was clothed in unfamiliar swim trunks and was also found along with another victim, Errol Terrell. His death was also never determined. Latonya Wilson, age 7, was the ninth victim and the second female. On June 22, 1980, Latonya disappeared from her parents' apartments. According to a witness, she was abducted by two men one whom they seen climbing in the apartment window and also seen holding LaTanya in his hands while speaking to another man in the parking lot. 
Now, guys, I'm going to stop right here for a minute because this is very baffling. Um, you mean to tell me a witness watched a man crawl in somebody's apartment window, come out with a child in his arms, and start talking to another man in the parking lot, and the police was never called? Like that that is just extremely baffling and I'm not understanding um how a witness could just sit there and watch that. Um if there really was a said witness. I I just don't understand how you can see this take place. Know that those men did not belong in that apartment, but you would sit and watch him climb in the window bring a girl down in his arms and talk to another man in the parking lot without alerting anybody it just doesn't make sense but okay so latonya's body was found on october the 18th 1980 in a fenced in area at the end of verbena street in atlanta her body had become a skeleton and cause of death could not be determined the day after Latanya disappeared, 10-year-old Aaron Wash disappeared. On June 23, 1980, Aaron Wash was last seen at a local grocery store getting into a blue Chevrolet with either one or two black men. A female witness said that she saw Aaron being led from Tanner's grocery store by a by a six foot tall 180 pound black man who was around 30 years of age now the car of this particular case matched the description of the car implicated in the jeffrey mathis disappearance aaron was last seen around 6 p.m at the shopping center his body was found June 24th, 1980, beneath the railroad trestle at Constitution Road and Moreland Avenue. Now, his accident, his his death was first ruled as an accident. Then the official cause of death was asphyxiation from a broken neck suffered in a fall. So the police actually tried to say that um he accidentally fell from this railing, but his mother was adamant that he was so afraid of heights that he would not have gone near this railing um, to fall over in the beginning and that somebody had to push him over or throw him over um, this railing. The 11th victim was nine-year-old Anthony Carter, known as Tony, to his family and friends. Anthony Carter went missing on July the 6th, 1980. He was last seen at 1.30 a.m. at 9.39 Cunningham Place. Anthony's body was found July the 7th, 1980 at a warehouse located at 657 Wells Street. Anthony's cause of death was multiple stab wounds. Number 12 was Errol Ter Terrell, or Terrell, age 11. Earl went missing on July the 30th of 1980. He was last seen around 3.30 p.m. at Lakewood Avenue near South Bend Park in southeast Atlanta. Earl was found on January the 9th, 1981, with cause of death being asphyxiation. Now, Earl was the victim that was also found with Christopher um, Richardson. Um, they were actually found together side by side. And they were actually found at the intersection of Red Run Road and Desert Drive in East Point. Number 13 was Clifford Jones, who was the age of 13. Clifford disappeared on August the 20th, 1980. Clifford was last seen at 12.40 p.m. at the intersection of St. James Avenue and Lookout Avenue. Clifford was visiting Atlanta from Ohio. 
Clifford's body was found August the 21st, 1980, beside a trash receptacle in the rear of Hollywood Plaza Shopping Center. Now, guys, Clifford wasn't even from Atlanta, so just imagine sending your son off on vacation to visit other family, and this sort of thing happens to him. Um, I can't even imagine you know, what his mother was feeling or what she, you know, went through or anything like that. It, it's just really sad. Um, Darren Glass, age 10, was the 14th victim. Darren was last seen at his home around 5.30 p.m. on September the 14th, 1980. Now, Darren is still missing. His remains are still missing. His body has never been recovered. However, they do believe that um, Darren is one of the victims of the missing and murdered Atlanta children. Um, even though his body has never been recovered, they do believe him to be one of the victims of the missing and murdered Atlanta children as well. So number 15 was Charles Stevens, age 12, who went missing on October the 9th, 1980. He was last seen around 4.30 p.m. at his home at 1701 Prior Circle in Southeast Atlanta. Charles was found on October the 10th, 1980 at a mobile home park in East Point off Norman Berry Drive. His cause of death was also asphyxiation. Number 16 was Aaron Jackson, age 9, who was known as Junior to his family and friends. Aaron went missing on November the 1st, 1980. Aaron was last seen around 7 a.m. at Moreland Plaza at Custard and Moreland Road, which we now call Moreland Avenue in Southeast Atlanta. His body was found November the 2nd, 1980, near South River at Forest Park Road in Fulton County. His cause of death was suffocation. And so, guys, I'm going to stop here for a minute again. So, Custard Avenue and Moreland Avenue is where I was actually living at this time. And I was eight when these murders started. Actually, I had just turned eight the day before the actual first body was found. I turned eight on July the 27th of 1979, and the first body was actually found on July the 28th of 1979. So guys, we actually still have this home right now. My grandmother purchased this home when I was one, and we still have this home right now. Um, so you see how close I was to these, to a lot of these incidents on here, but especially the Moreland Avenue and Custard. My cousin and I used to walk down to the, um, Moreland Shopping Center Plaza a lot, not when we was eight, but you know, when we got a little older, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys an insight on how close a lot of us was uh, where a lot of us were to these um, disappearances and murders. So it could have well been myself or one of my cousins, a friend, anybody, because we were right there in the vicinity of all of this that was taking place. Now, um, number 17 was Patrick Rogers, age 16. Now, Patrick knew several of the previous victims, and Patrick was known as Patman to his family and friends. He went missing on November the 30th. Now, some sources say it was November the 10th. Whichever day, whether it was November the 10th or November the 30th, he was reported being last seen at 7.05 a.m. at a bus stop at the 1100 block of Henry Thomas Drive. His body was found December the 17th, 1980, near the Chattahoochee River at Paces Ferry Road in Cobb County. Cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. So, 
just another little thing. Um, Henry Thomas Drive, which we now call Henry Thomas Boulevard, it was actually about five minutes away from Moreland and Custard Avenue. So you can kind of see that a lot of these just took place in like a square or a circle or whatever you want to call it. None of these disappearances um, were far from each other. So again, those two, um, Aaron and Patrick, they were actually, they actually disappeared within five minutes of, you know, each other. Well, not of each other, but the place in which they went missing from was like five minutes away from, you know, one another. Now, um, yes, yeah, so Patrick's death um, was blunt force trauma to the head. Number 18, there was Luby Jeter, who was age 14 and known as Chuck Rosie to family and friends. Luby was last seen at 2.30 p.m. on January the 3rd, 1981, outside of Stewart Lakewood Avenue in Southeast Atlanta. I'm sorry, Stewart Lakewood Mall in Southeast Atlanta. Luby's body was found on February the 5th, 1981 at Van Diver Road in South Fulton. Luby Jeter's friend, 15-year-old Terry Pugh, went missing on January the 21st, 1981. He was last seen at the Shoney's on Memorial Drive in Stone Mountain. His body was discovered roadside in Rockdale County on January the 23rd, 1981, with his cause of death being ligature strangulation. Now, in Terry's case, an anonymous caller called the police and told them where to find Terry's body up in Rockdale County. Now, Terry Pugh also lived in the same exact apartment complex as the second victim, Edward Teddy Smith. Now, guys, I'm going to stop right here again. Um... Rockdale County, um, back in the late 70s, early 80s, and the 70s period, 80s period, was all white. And it was right there in the vicinity of the KKK headquarters in Stone Mountain where they held their meetings. Um, that was their area. So, it baffles me how a black man would drive all the way to Rockdale County to dump a body where the KKK and all whites were at that particular time. And now, mind you, from where these, where Terry disappeared from and where the majority where all of these victims disappeared from, Rockdale County is about 30, a 30, 40 minute drive from these places. So it baffles me that a black man would drive all the way to Rockdale County to dump a body and not be afraid that him himself would be spotted and hurt or seen dumping this body, it, it to me, it just doesn't make sense, but okay. Number 20 was 12-year-old Patrick Baltazar. He went missing on February the 6th, 1981. He was last seen at the Fisherman's Cove restaurant on Cortland Street. And for all of you guys that have visited Atlanta, um, most visitors go downtown. So I'm sure if you visit Atlanta, you are familiar with Cortland Street that is located downtown. Patrick was last seen around 5.30 p.m. that day. His body was found February the 13th, 1981 at Corporate Square in DeKalb County. His cause of death was also ligature strangulation. 
Number 21 was 15-year-old Curtis Walker, known as Tank to his family and friends. Now, Curtis went missing between 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. on February the 19th, 1981. He was last seen near the Byron Gun Club on Bankhead Highway, and his body was found near Wardrop Road Bridge at South River in DeKalb County on March 6, 1981. Cause of death was also strangulation. Number 22 was 15-year-old Joseph Bell, known as JoJo, to family and friends. Joseph went missing on March 2, 1981. He was last seen at Cap'n Peg Seafood on Georgia Avenue. His body was found April 19, 1981 at South River near Klondike Road in Rockdale County. Again, asphyxiation was cause of death. So there's that Rockdale County again, guys. Again, Rockdale County is every bit of 30, 40 minutes away from these places. And again, it is the area where the KKK, um, it, that was their domain. That area was, you know, close to Stone Mountain where... They would set up their meetings. That area was an all-white area. So I'm not sure why would a black man choose to drive 30, 40 minutes to this part of Atlanta and dump a body. It just doesn't make sense. But again, okay. Number 23 was 13-year-old Timothy Hill, known as Timmy to family and friends. Timothy went missing on March 11, 1981. He was last seen between 2.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. at the rear of 987 Sales Avenue. He also lived on Sales Avenue. Timmy's body was found on March 30th, 1981, near the Chattahoochee River at Fabron Road in Fulton County. His cause of death was also asphyxiation, drowning. Number 24, Eddie Duncan, age 21, was the first adult victim. He went missing on March 20th, 1981, and was last seen at the playroom at Techwood and Mills. His body was found March 31st, 1981, near the Chattahoochee River at Fabron Road in Douglas County. His cause of death is as unknown, but they did put it could have been a possible strangulation. Number 25 was 20-year-old Larry Rogers, known as Little Larry. He went missing on March 30th, 1981, last seen in the afternoon at Westlake and Simpson at Israel Church. His body was found April 9th, 1981 in a kitchen of an apartment on Temple Street in Northwest Atlanta. And again, asphyxiation strangulation was the cause of his death. Number 26 was 23-year-old Michael McIntosh, known as Mickey, to his family and friends. Michael went missing around April 1, 1981. He was last seen near his residence on Windsor Street in southwest Atlanta. He was also found near the Chattahoochee River at Fabron Road in Fulton County. Asphyxiation was also the cause of his death. Number 27 was 20-year-old Jimmy Ray Payne. Jimmy went missing on April the 22nd, 1981. He was last seen at 10.30 a.m. at his home on Magnolia Street. His body was found April the 27th, 1981. And guys, guess where? Yep, near the Chattahoochee River at Bankhead Highway and Riverview Road in Cobb County. Asphyxiation was also the cause of his death. 
Now, Jimmy Ray Payne was one of the victims that Wayne Williams was actually indicted and charged for his murder. Um, again, Jimmy Ray Payne was 21 years old. He was an adult. He was one of the victims that Wayne Williams was indicted and charged in his death. Number 28 was John Porter, age 28, who went missing in April of 1981. Now, I couldn't find where John actually was last seen, but his body was found on April the 12th, 1981 at 796 Bender Street in Southwest Atlanta, Fulton County. Cause of his death was multiple stab wounds. Number 29 was 17-year-old William Barrett. He went missing on May the 11th of 1981, last seen around 5 p.m. in the Kirkwood area. His body was found May 12th, 1981, along Winthrop Drive near I-20 in DeKalb County. Cause of his death was again asphyxiation. Now, there was a witness a 32-year-old a 32-year-old man by the name of Harold Wood who was a custodian from the Southwest High School supposedly Harold had run out of gas a mile from the scene as to where um, his body was found and Harold said that he saw a black man standing over and observing the location where the body was found before jumping in and driving away in a white over blue Cadillac. The last victim, number 30, was 27-year-old Nathaniel Cater. He went missing on May 21st, 1981. Now, there are some discrepancies in when he was last seen as well. He was reported as being last seen that morning at the Central City Park. But then he was also uh, reportedly last seen by Gardner Robert Henry at the entrance of the Rialto Theater in Atlanta, supposedly holding hands with Wayne Williams. His body was discovered on May 24th, 1981. And yep, you guessed it at the Chattahoochee River downstream from South Cobb Drive. Cause of his death was also asphyx asphyxiation. Um, Nathaniel Cater was the second victim that Wayne Williams was actually charged and indicted and charged with his murder. And again, Nathaniel Cater was 27 years old. He was an adult. Jimmy Ray Payne and Nathaniel Cater were the only two victims out of these 30 victims that Wayne Williams um, was actually indicted and charged with their murders. Um, but the media and the police department put it out there and made the world think Wayne Williams did all of these murders. Um, you know... My opinion is I don't believe it. And to this day, he has actually maintained his innocence um, and said that he did not do these murders. Now, guys, because this is a series, there is going to be several videos. So the second video is going to be about Wayne Williams. But I, I have it's a few things here that baffles me. Um... First of all, all the witnesses that actually came forward, they all stated a blue car. Even the man where he say he saw somebody standing over the scene observing, even he said that man jumped into a white over blue Cadillac. Wayne Williams had a white station wagon. Another thing that baffles me is the Rockdale County Klondike Road thing. Again, guys, that's at least 30, 40 minutes away from all of where these um, kids and adults disappeared from. 
So I'm just not sure what man, you know, black man that, that would drive that far to dump a body in an area, an all white area and a KKK area at that. And guys, it's very important because on another video, you're going to see that there were actually witnesses that said that they overheard the KKK speaking of certain things on this case and we're actually going to do a video about that and the FBI did have a file on this but they didn't let people know they said in fear of inciting a race war or a race riot and you know another thing that baffles me is you know they said that you know, once a person is dead, that their body gets extremely heavy. So I'm trying to figure out how did Wayne Williams manage to pick these grown men up, dump their bodies into the river by himself? Did these grown men not fight him back while he's strangling them? Did they just lay there and allow him to strangle them? I'm, I'm just not sure. It's all baffling and confusing um, to me. But we're going to get deeper into that, you know, in the other videos that's going to follow. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And I just want to thank everybody for viewing my video. Um, if you like the video, please like, share, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Anyway, guys, thank you. Fresh, smelling good Bye. in the streets of the ATL. Yeah. No, I'm watching through the frames of my okay. Chanel. On the grind, getting mine in 2006. Yeah.